Good afternoon, everyone. Before I get started today, I'd like to ask anyone with a smartphone to take it out and keep it within reach. I'll be asking you to use it in just a moment. Thank you, Chancellor Fault, for the invitation to be today's speaker. I'm honored to be standing here in front of a sea of Tar Heel Blue and friendly student faces. Graduates, you have worked hard to be here today. My fellow faculty, university administrators, your families and guests, and I are so proud of how much you have grown as a person and how much you have already accomplished. Thank you for taking this time to celebrate your achievement with us. About 15 years ago, I too received a degree from UNC, my PhD. I guess this place is too special to leave because here I am, lucky enough to still be here. My husband, affectionately referred to as the other Dr. Hogan, and I, we mentor many students. So our children, Jake and Lexi, are building memories intertwined with campus life too. Best of all, they have grown up around you, a diverse group of students. Some of you have babysat, taught them Spanish, and simply put, have been amazing role models. I'm grateful to be here today to send you onward with a bit of advice about your next steps in life's journey. You will have many transitions in your life, and you may be feeling apprehensive about this one. But trust that your time here has equipped you with the life skills to be successful. Today, I'll stress the importance of embracing the diversity you've grown to appreciate in your time at UNC. By truly understanding the perspective of others, we know you will continue to accomplish great things. So today, I'll share some of my perspectives as an educator with you. Recently, I estimated how many students I have taught since I began teaching at UNC. With about 1,100 students per year for 12 years, that's about 13,000 students. It's not far off from the population of some well-known towns in North Carolina, like Pinehurst, Morganton, and Moorhead City. I might apologize to many of the first few thousand students I taught. I may not have believed in them the way I wholeheartedly believe in you. When I taught then, I thought a lot about myself as a teacher, and not always about the students as learners. I worried whether I was delivering content in a way that they would enjoy. I thought I always had to be the expert, never wrong and full of confidence. I might not have explicitly welcomed them into their first science class in college. They may have felt intimidated. In two words, I can summarize my perspective then. It was teacher-centered. Several years ago, I began to reflect deeply about my teaching. I questioned what it meant to be an effective teacher. What methods did effective teachers use? My perspective began changing. I'll tell you why in a moment. But for now, know that I began seeing my classroom through the lens of a learner. Let me pause here and ask you to think about a specific time in your life when your perspective changed. Parents and family members, maybe it relates to a parenting issue or work. Graduates, maybe it relates to a racial, political, or religious issue you became involved with as a student. So I'll ask you, to think again about a specific example in your life when your perspective changed. And I'm now going to pause the way I do when I'm teaching to really give you time to select and reflect on this specific time in your own life. Silence. It can be so powerful and meaningful and even downright uncomfortable for some who think they should be filling the space with talking. But many of us require this silent time. And silence plays an important role in the classroom, too. 
Now that you have your own life moment in mind, I'd like to ask each and every one of you, what caused you to change your perspective? I honestly would like to hear from each of you. If you each contribute, this could look a little less like a speech and a little more like my classroom. I'm thrilled to consider this my biggest classroom challenge ever. <laughs> I want to include everyone to know what you are thinking in real time and make this less about me, less teacher-centered. Technology is sometimes the right solution in the classroom, just as it will help bring us together today. So please, turn on your smartphones and head to the website pollev.com slash Carolina. A question is waiting for you. And graduates, I know you thought you finished your last work, but I promise this will be the last quiz standing between you and your degree. When you get there, please answer the question, what was most important in causing your change of perspective? I see many of you working diligently to get there. If it doesn't work, that's okay. I've never tried a poll with this many people either. Well, thank you for sharing. Let's take a look at the results together, which are still coming in. We can see the different choices that people have chosen in this room live today, and your responses show that perspectives change in many ways. All of these played into why my perspective as a teacher changed. But I'm going to focus on the first two choices that we have up there. So first, data and evidence. A colleague plopped some data on my desk one day that showed some students were more likely to fail my course simply based on race and ethnicity. I had a hard time recovering from this news. Would an effective teacher have an achievement gap like this? Second, better understanding of someone, otherwise known as empathy. Many of you chose that. I started listening to the underlying story that students were telling me in office hours, and it redefined my understanding of diversity. The individual stories, sometimes personal, sometimes academic, deeply affected me. I found myself in intimate conversations that occasionally moved both me and student to tears. Graduates, do me a favor and help me demonstrate some of the diversity we celebrate at Carolina. I'm going to list some characteristics of students I have met during my office hours. If I say a characteristic that describes you, please stand up to be recognized if you are able and remain standing. In my office hours, I met students who served our country as members of the military. And we will like to applaud you a second time. remain standing, were first in their family to attend college. <laughs> Spoke a second language at home with family. identified as persons of color. <laughs> We're transfer students. <laughs> we 
worked a job to help pay for their education. Changed their major at least once. <laughs> came from families where college was the expectation. <laughs> and were not defined by any one box and who I clearly missed in office hours. <laughs> Thank you. We celebrate all of these student experiences and many more. Congratulations. Please be seated, thank you. The diversity in my class classroom led me to ask, would an effective teacher assume all students learn the same way? I was awakened to the perspectives I did not have. I'm grateful to the individual students who taught me empathy and why I needed a learner-centered classroom. Graduates, don't miss opportunities in your own life to reflect reason and have meaningful interactions that will lead you to reevaluate your perspective. And then ask yourself, does this require action on my part? In my case, it did. I couldn't unlearn what students had taught me. I stopped looking at students as problems that needed to be solved and started viewing them as individuals who had something unique and special to bring to my classroom. I wanted to take action. I thought, I can do better. I need to change. So I took a risk. I scrapped everything I thought I knew about college teaching, and I reimagined what learning in a large lecture setting could be. I researched education literature to understand how learning works. I took best practices from other teachers, including my campus colleagues, and even my kids' elementary teachers. Thank you, Ms. Miller. I was ready to launch. I was going to teach my first learner-centered classroom to 400 students with diverse backgrounds. This was my plan. Students would prepare at their own pace before class, helping to level the playing field for everyone. In class, students would think alone and in groups, practicing difficult concepts with peers, with peers and with me. They would have aha moments in class, not the night before exams. I would use technology to ensure I heard from everyone, just as I heard from you in our large poll. I would use real-time data about student learning to change the direction of class in an instant, because for the first time, I would know exactly what my students didn't know and adjust accordingly. That was my plan. I felt excited, and then self-doubt snuck in. I felt vulnerable. Would they laugh at the activities? Would they interact and collaborate? Would they write mean things about me on Rate My Professor? <laughs> would any of this even make a difference in learning outcomes? I knew it would not be perfect, that I was not perfect, but I proceeded with courage. Graduates, there will be times in your career that you will be scared to take a risk, like I was. But here's what I learned when I stepped out of my comfort zone. There were imperfect moments. I made mistakes, but I used each mistake as a learning opportunity. With practice and experience each day, I felt more and more skilled in my learner-centered classroom. I became more confident. My conversations with students felt more meaningful. I believed in this idea, and I was all in. And here is maybe the most important part of what I think I did right. And I hope you will do in your own life when you receive feedback on your performance. I was kind to myself. I didn't give a few negative comments more space in my head than the overwhelming majority of positive comments. So hard to do when those few stinging comments ring loudly in our heads and remind us of self-doubt. Graduates, it may not be obvious to you yet, but when you take a risk, you also set yourself up for life's great rewards. Not only did I get to experience personal wins for individual students, I had data and evidence that my new perspective and teaching methods were working. 
all students were achieving more than students in my previous lecture course. All students reported an increased sense of community in the classroom. But recall there were certain student groups I had hoped to level the playing field for, and I did. Achievement gaps were narrowed for underrepresented minorities. An achievement gap that once existed for first-generation college students in my course completely disappeared. By changing my perspective and taking a risk, there were rewards for all students. I think as you move through life, you too will find that your greatest rewards result from a risk you took. Many of our large classes are now taught this way at Carolina. Our faculty are recognized nationally as leaders in transforming higher education. You have been students in our learner-centered classrooms. When you entered these classes, we asked you to rethink your preconceived notions of large lectures, to step outside your comfort zones, to embrace a little risk, and get comfortable with being vulnerable. And you did. We thank you for embracing the discomforts of true learning together. Graduates, as I near the end of my time speaking with you, I hope you will take away three pieces of advice as you head out into the world. First, continually look for opportunities to reflect on and challenge your own perspective. Second, to widen your perspective, embrace the diversity around you. Use others' personal stories. Use evidence and reasoning like your professors here have taught you to do. Third, be open to vulnerabilities and accept that risks can end with great rewards if you are willing to accept your imperfections along the way. These three ideas will help you live what scholar and author Brené Brown describes as a, quote, wholehearted life. If you have never heard of Brené Brown, this teacher would like to suggest some homework. Read her work or watch her TED Talk. And because I find great inspiration in her words, I'll end with them. Dr. Brown says, quote, there are many tenets of wholeheartedness, but at its very core is vulnerability and worthiness, facing uncertainty, exposure, and emotional risks, and knowing that I am enough. Graduates, I wish you a life of wholeheartedness. Thank you.